great to great to see everyone. The Lieutenant Governor and I are pleased to be here today with our team, uh, members of the Cabinet, to present our administration's budget recommendation for fiscal year 2025. We are grateful to our teams across our executive branch who've worked hard to prepare a strong and fiscally sound proposal. Special thanks, of course, to our Secretary of Administration and Finance, Matt Gorkowitz, and to the ANF team, including Assistant Secretary for Budget, Chris Marino, Chief of Strategy and Operations, Dana Sullivan, and all of the analysts and managers. Thank you very much. The budget we filed today is balanced, responsible, and forward-looking. It will protect taxpayer dollars and strengthen our state's fiscal health. And it responds directly to the needs of our residents and our economy, for housing and child care that's affordable, for schools that help every child reach their potential, and for transportation that is safe and reliable. In total, it calls for an outlay of $56.1 billion, which is a 2.9% increase over fiscal year 24. Now, by comparison, the average rate of growth over the last four years has been about 6.1%. The budget proposal today comes in at less than half of that. It's within consensus revenue projection, and it is below the current inflation rate, or CPI, of 3.4%. So in fact, we are tightening our belts. I want to be clear about that. Our economy remains strong, but the revenue picture is changing. Pandemic era funding relief has gone away, and nationally, the economic recovery has stabilized. So in this environment, it is important that we manage spending in a way that is making strategic choices, examining the impact of every dollar we propose to spend, and that we bring our budget in line with a rate of inflation and in line with the resources and the revenue that we have. The result is a smart and focused budget, delivering continuity in state services and making transformative impact on the urgent challenges that we face. It protects and advances the progress we made this past year, fully funding the next phase of our historic tax cuts, tax cuts that save money for residents across this state. It continues free breakfast and lunch. It preserves no-cost community college for students 25 and older through Mass Reconnect, which will strengthen our workforce and is something our employers are counting on. This budget also offers new investments to keep lowering household costs and strengthening our schools, our businesses, and our communities. It will fund Gateway to Pre-K, our plan to make childcare affordable to thousands of families across Massachusetts, while setting us on an important path to universal Pre-K in all 26 cities and beyond. It will establish literacy launch to make sure that our youngest students are all getting the quality reading instruction that they deserve and need. It will expand small business support and fund the development of an online business front door. This will help centralize and streamline services for businesses of all sizes. It will make affordable housing available for more people while we also advance the Affordable Homes Act, our $4.1 billion plan to tackle the root of the housing crisis in our state. We're proposing new investments as well to turn the climate challenge into good careers with funding for the Mass Clean Energy Center to support workforce training and advance our leadership, global leadership, I promise, in what will be a clean energy revolution. This budget will also invest in safe, reliable, affordable transportation across Massachusetts. It bolsters Chapter 90 investments in local roads and bridges to record levels with additional funding from the fair share funding. It will make historic 
commitments to the MBTA, doubling operating support and establishing a system-wide reduced fare for low-income riders across the state, while also ensuring fare options at regional transit authorities. These transportation investments not only improve the quality of life, they are integral to our economic growth and development. It's why we focused fair share funding for maximum impact, both in transportation and in education. It's also why we've gone so hard to compete for federal dollars. We've won funding for West East Rail, Cape Cod Bridges, and so much more this year. We're getting results, and we're planning ahead. We need a plan for a sustainable, equitable transportation funding uh, financing mechanism in Massachusetts. And after years, as I've said before, of seeing that can kick down the road, we're taking action to deliver. To earlier today, I signed an executive order to create a transportation funding task force. This task force will be composed of both public and private sector leaders representing communities across Massachusetts, and I have asked them to report to me in less than 12 months on recommendations for how we can support safe, reliable, efficient roadways, railways, and transit throughout our state. We have accomplished so much in the past year, listening to residents in every community of our state and working in partnership with the legislature. We've shown that we can take on hard challenges and deliver. That's what our budget proposal for fiscal year 25 is all about. We look forward to working closely with the legislature again to deliver on shared goals, to lower costs, and to grow opportunities for people all across this great state. And now you'll hear from Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. Thank you, Governor. It's great to be here with all of our teammates in government, especially so many of our a and analysts who we spent a lot of quality time with over the last several weeks. You know, this budget process gives us the welcome opportunity to take a deeper dive into the work that each executive office and agency is doing. It's truly impressive to see the breadth of ways that our work helps grow people, right? There's numbers here, but behind all those dollars, we know there are people. People, communities, businesses, all of this budget is tied to trying to ensure we're doing the best we can to serve that population. And it's inspiring to see how hard our whole team is working to make every dollar go as far as possible as far as it possibly can for those residents. I want to focus a bit on the local aid process of this budget proposal. We're really proud of the budget that fully funds the fourth year phase in of the Student Opportunity Act. Um, this is a $6.9 million budget item for Chapter 70 education, representing a 4% increase over fiscal year 2024, helping all 351 cities and towns. The budget also recommends an overall investment in local aid to our cities and towns of $8.7 billion a 3% increase, which includes a 3% increase in unrestricted government aid. In addition, we're proposing to use $100 million from fair share funding in this budget to boost Chapter 90 transportation funding to a total of $300 million in fiscal year 2025 to help cities and towns repair crumbling roads and bridges. We know that 80% of roads in the Commonwealth are local roads, the ones you drive on every day. That's where these dollars are so precious and so important. We're also recommending a 35% increase in funding for local resilience projects that protect communities from flooding and other climate-related impacts, investments in culverts and dams and ways that we can future-proof infrastructure. As a former mayor and certainly as someone who has traveled around the state, listening to our local officials, understanding what their needs are in every region of the Commonwealth, I'm really proud of the way that this budget proposal responds to local needs. And with that, I'm going to turn it over for more details to the Secretary of a and Secretary Gorkowitz. We're excited to be here today to present to all of you the Governor's Fiscal Year 25 budget recommendations. I want to start by thanking my A&F team that has put countless hours uh, into this budget over the past month. Thank you all for your hard work and dedication to this team. I also want to thank the Governor and Lieutenant Governor for their guidance and leadership in helping to craft a budget that responsibly builds on the important investments we are able to make in our first year in this administration. 
As the governor said, the budget we are filing today is balanced, responsible, and forward-looking, and continues to make progress on the types of investments in areas like early education, transportation, that will be transformative for many years to come. Many of these new investments, such as literacy launch and the doubling of the operating budget support for the MBTA, and the funding to leverage billions in borrowing for our transportation system and higher education campuses are possible because of the thoughtful approach this administration has taken to making sure that the $1.3 billion budgeted from fair share surtax revenues work for everyone in the state. Fair share continues to enable us to make transformative investments in our schools, childcare, and transportation systems. This will pay dividends for generations. But as we have all acknowledged what is in front of us, Tax collections in FY24 have not kept pace with projections, and for FY25, we expect revenue growth to be flat. This has required a thoughtful and deliberate approach to how we manage spending. The good news is that economists tell us that we should expect to see a soft landing in this fiscal year and a recovery in the later half of FY25 um, into FY26. After a series of years with unprecedented revenue growth and enhanced federal resources, the FY25 budget responds to this fiscal climate by limiting growth to 2.9 percent over last year's fiscal year GAA, excluding spending tied to surtax and medical assistance trust fund, which of course has dedicated revenue sources. This spending growth is below inflation, with the consumer price index currently up 3.5 percent compared to last year. This con controlled growth emphasizes the administration's commitment to ensuring fiscal sustainability and helping Massachusetts stay competitive. In addition, House 2 relies on a combination of reoccurring new revenues options, limited one-time and multi-year resources to produce a balanced budget approach that will set Massachusetts up for long-term success. This includes a limited use of excess capital gains capped at $375 million that will be an option of last resort. And even with this proposal, we continue to grow the stabilization fund, which has now reached a record high of $8 billion. I want to underscore the last point. This budget does not rely on the use of stabilization fund and is projected to grow the balance of the stabilization fund based on the proposal for you today. We also propose to generate new revenue growth through proposals such as iLottery that will grow revenue over time. Taken together, this combination of new recurring revenues and limited one-time and multi-year resources creates a glide path for future fiscal years when tax revenues begin to rebound. We believe this is a balanced and responsible approach to spending in F fiscal year 25 that accounts for our fiscal reality while continuing to support essential programs and services. I'd like to close where I began. This budget is balanced, responsible, and forward-looking. It continues to make the types of key investments in transportation and education that will be transformative for years to come. Finally, I want to thank uh, Chairman Mikowitz and Chairman Rodericks and their staff. Uh, their partnerships over the past years have been critical to our success, and it is in that spirit we officially today hand over uh, the budget for our friends in the legislature, and I look forward to working with them to develop a budget that meets the needs of all of our residents. Thank you.